My title is Believing That Faith Can Heal, Save, or Cure You. When I was thinking about what I was going to minister on, after I got it, I was like, now I need to give it a title. It took me a couple of days before I could even come up with a title. And I was riding and I come up with it. I said, well, I need to try to remember. So when I get home, I can write it down. Believing that faith can heal, save, or cure you. I started off in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, where it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And we know that even with faith, even with your prayers, before your prayers can be answered, you have to have faith. You have to put your faith out before your prayers, before your prayers will even be answered. If you don't have faith, the prayers won't be answered. Faith comes before a prayer is answered or before you can receive what you are praying for. If you don't have faith, first of all, what will you be praying for without faith? You won't even be praying for anything if you don't have faith with it. You got to have faith mixed up with it. Then I went on to Matthew's, some examples of people in the Bible who had faith for healing and different things. The ninth chapter, I started at verse 2. He said, Behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. This man here was sick, couldn't walk, couldn't do anything. He heard that Jesus was coming. He knew Jesus was coming. He had enough faith to know that Jesus was coming. He knew that he could get saved if he could get to Jesus. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. So he telling right then, when he told him that his sins be forgiven him. Looking at this reading this here, it brought me to saying that the reason that he was in that situation, first of all, was because of his sins. His sins had got him in that situation. Probably after he got in that situation, he probably started changing his life. After he heard of Jesus, he put his faith out there to believe that he could be healed. He put his faith forward to know that he can be healed. And he knew Jesus was coming at that time. And he used that. He got those people to bring him. When Jesus seen them coming, Jesus knew that they had faith that he can be healed. He knew the man, the man had the faith to be healed. But he, he had to have that. He had to have that faith to be healed. And Jesus even told him his sins be forgiven. He even forgave his sins. And that was to help him get healed. He had to have that. He had to put his faith forward. And then as we go on at the end of verse 8, he told him, arise, take up thy bed and go into thy house. He was healed. He was able to get up and walk when he left there. They brought him in a bed, couldn't do anything. When he left there, he was able to get up and walk. His faith had got him healed. Verse 18, he said, while he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshiped him, saying, my daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hands upon her, and she shall live. This guy here, he was a ruler over people. He knew. He knew when he left that his daughter was dead. Even he had enough faith to know that if he could get to Jesus, that he would raise his daughter from the dead. Like I say, you have to have the faith and the belief. You have to believe. He used that as his point of contact, that if he could get to Jesus, and he knew that his daughter could be healed. And on Jesus' way to get to the daughter, look what else he ran across. And behold, a woman which was diseased when an issue of blood, 12 years, came behind him. Everybody know, we know, this is the woman that has spent all her money. She had spent all her money on physicians. Nobody couldn't find out what was wrong with her. And like Sister Lee said, when you go to the doctor, the first thing they ask you, what's wrong with you? Okay, if I came to you, you ought to be able to tell me what's wrong then. But this lady here, she had to put her faith out there already. All she wanted to do was just touch it. Just touch his clothes. She said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I knew I'd be healed. In verse 21, for she said within herself, if I may touch his garment, I shall be whole. She didn't say heal. She didn't say heal. She said whole. She said whole. That's taking all her inside with the problem she had and starting it all over again. Everything in the inside of her, whole. She wasn't just healed. She was whole. Amazing. She went there with that on her knowing that she was going to be made whole. She wasn't going to just be healed. Her body was going to be whole. She believed that was going to happen to her. But Jesus turned about, and when he saw her, said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. 
She had already went out. She put her faith out before. When she was praying, her faith was already going out before her. And that's what happened. All she wanted to do was just touch the hem of his garment. And she knew she was going to be made whole. Like Pastor always said, that was the key to it. She wasn't here. She was made whole. To have everything on the inside of you to be made back whole. That was a new start for her. You talking about when she went back to the doctor and blew his mind. He probably didn't know what was going on. He was so lost at that point. Now you talking about amazing. You go back and then they examine you in this hole. Nothing wrong. They can't find anything. They probably from room to room talking to each other, you know. Don't know what's going on. But she knew what was happening. Down to verse 26. And the fame thereof went abroad into all the land. And when Jesus departed then, two blind men following him crying and said, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind man came to him, and Jesus said unto him, Believe ye that I am able to do this. They said unto him, Yeah, Lord. Then touch he their eyes according to their faith. Be it unto you. They knew. They had them put everything out there. They had did the same thing. They were praying. and They had heard that Jesus was coming. They were praying that they was going to be able to get their sight, that he could heal them. He could make them able to see. It's amazing. You walk around all your life, you can't see anything. And you heard of Jesus Christ coming, and you heard that he's a healer. He can do this for you. You've been praying all your life. You've been putting your faith out there. And here comes Jesus alone, telling you, according to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were open, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, say that no man know it. Now, he gave them that commandment there. Don't tell anyone who did it. But in verse 31, they turn around. After all this time, now, they've been praying for this here. But look what they turned around and did. But they went their way departed, spreading abroad his fame in all that country. You done prayed for this here. You done got what you wanted. But you went out and did what he told you not to do. Now, I don't know what happened after that part. You know, I don't know what happened to them. They had their sight then, but who knows what could have happened after that. Like I said, it said their faith and assurance that Jesus could give them their sight was the substance of reality. They hoped for it. It also gave them the evidence or trust that they will receive what they asked for. They believed, that is, they had faith in advance that it would be done. They had faith that they was going to be able to see, but they should have followed what he told them. But being excited, being excited, man, I can see. I can see because you know when you run across somebody and they knew that you couldn't see the first thing they were going to ask you, man, how can you see? His, his fame. Yeah, they did his fame. They did talk about Jesus. 26. And the fame here went abroad into all that land. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like you say, they did talk about Jesus. I guess, you know, when somebody asked them, well, how did you get to see? I didn't do anything. I found who I was looking for. So that's what helped me. Romans 10 and 17 tells us, so faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Daniel chapter 3. And we all know the story on this here with the king. Nebuchadnezzar, he made this image of gold in which he had that he bowed down to and he wanted everybody in that kingdom to bow down to. He gave them the commandment. He sent all his people out to gather, to gather them up. He told them, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. He wanted them, he wanted everybody in his kingdom, when they heard music, to bow down to his image that he had made, that he had put out. That's what he wanted everybody in his kingdom to do. And then on verse 11, it said, and whoso falleth not down and worship it, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And verse 12, they tell him, there are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the provision of the Babylonian, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, not worship the golden image which thou hast set up. They wasn't for that. They was about Jesus Christ. They was about the Lord. And they knew they knew, what could this image do them? Nothing. 
Like they say, you made an image. It can't see, it can't hear, it can't smell, it can't taste, it can't do anything. That's just an image that you done built. It's just sitting there. Nothing it can do. It can't do anything. And they knew this. They knew they wasn't about to bow down to him. They wasn't about to follow his word. And then he told them, if you be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of these instruments, which I made, but if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into a midst of a burning fire furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Who is the God that's going to deliver you out of his hand? <laughs> that's what he asked them. That's what he asked them. Who is the God that's going to deliver you out of his hands? First of all, they were never in his hand. He didn't know that. First of all, they were never in his hand. They God had already planned this here. He wanted to let him see that what he had did wasn't going to work. So I got three people here for you to try and see if this going to work. He set him up for it. Let him build what he wanted to build, make his image. And then I got three people that I'm going to let you get to see if you can do anything with them. See if your image going to work. And he got his results. He told them in verse 19, Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the form of his visionage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, because they didn't bow down. They didn't worship the idol. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace, one seven times more than it want to be heated. So he had this thing heated way hotter than he had ever did. He had plans. He had plans to destroy them, take them out. But they God had another plan for him. And he commanded the most high men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. And these men that were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and they were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Now, you know that this thing had heated up. It was already hot, and he told them seven times hotter. You know what was supposed to happen. Well, he thought that he knew what was supposed to happen to him, but their faith and believing in what they believed in, believing in Jesus Christ, they knew. They had no doubt what was going to happen to them. They didn't fear. They took it head on. No fighting, didn't fight them. Put me in. Let's see what's going to happen. So you can see what's going to happen. Therefore, because the king commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot and the flame of the fire slew those men, <laughs> the men that took them up there to get put in the furnace, look what happened to them. They the ones who got killed. They got slew. At the time when they was going up there, they should have been trying to make peace with them three that they were taking. They should have been saying, we trust your God and not this image. But they was under his commandment. The music was playing and they was doing what they were told to do. And look what happened to them. They lost their life. And not only probably did they lost their life, they probably lost their soul too. That was the bad part about it. Lost their soul at that time. As Nebuchadnezzar goes on, he said in verse 25, he answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the four is the Son of God. Now, this man, you're going to go make an image for to be your God. Then when you look in here, you see a form of the four person, and you say it like the Son of God. Evidently, he must have knew who God was if he's seen this form. How would he know what the form of God looked like if he didn't know it? He must have known it if he looked in there and seen that. If he seen the fourth one look like the son of God. But he wanted this image to be his God. He knew what the son of God looked like. And didn't nobody tell him that was God in there. It kind of threw me for a loop right there. I was like, if he said this here, why would he waste his time making an image? And he knew what God looked like. Evidently, he had got a picture from somewhere. Something had came to him, but he took the chance of wanting to do what he wanted to do. He wanted everybody to bow down to him. He wanted to be the ruler, and he paid the price for it. It goes on in verse 26. Then Nebuchadnezzar came forth to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire, and the princes, governors, and captains, and kings, councils, being gathered together, saw these men upon whose body the fire had no power, nor was any hair of their heads singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed in them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, 
Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language will speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made a dunghill, because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the provision of Babylonia. He could have did that. He didn't have to go through all that. He knew. He knew, but he just, he resisted. He wanted to be in charge. It could have been simple. He could have just went on and went with the program. Yeah, but well, you're right. You're right. Pride. Yeah, uh-huh. Like you say, but his pride, him being king, him being king, his pride wouldn't let him stand up and worship God. As I went on, I said, when I read in Romans 10 and 17 about the faith, I said, today we have the complete word of God. The Bible is God-inspired word to us. When we read the Bible, our faith, confidence, and assurance in God and Jesus Christ, you know, to help us to answer our prayers and bring us through impossible situations. What we think is impossible. We think is impossible, but God knows. He said all things are possible. Faith is trust, assurance, and having confidence in God. Living in God is shown by our service and obedience to God, to God's word. God will increase our faith if we firmly ask and draw close to him. If you truly believe, you can get that. You truly believe. If your faith, if you have enough faith, you can be healed. You can be saved. You can get that cure that you're looking for. Because I've heard people saying, my family member died from a cancer that, you know, the one they can't cure. I say, it's, it's no such thing. And I told them, I said, I said, well, Jesus Christ can cure anything. He can cure anything. I say, but you have to believe. You have to believe and you have to have faith. You have to have the faith. Because like I say, the faith going to go out before the prayers. Before you start praying, you got to have faith to go out before that prayer. You put the faith out there first before it. And while you praying it, it will be answered. Each one of these people that I read about, they had faith. They had already put their faith out there before it. They knew Jesus Christ was on that path. And all they wanted to do, sin, touch him, any kind of way they could get to him. And they knew. They knew they could be healed. Not only healed, made whole. Made whole. And once you made whole, that's it. And then... They